All right, the other portion of the Constitution where money is mentioned is prohibitions on the states. And you've got to realize that the men who went to the Constitutional Convention were very jealous guardians of state power. And one of the things that lost here in America is that the states created the federal government, not the other way around. The creature has become greater than its creator, and that's, of course, wrong. And so the people who went from the different states to the Constitutional Convention willingly said, no state shall coin money or emit bills of credit, and that's the term for paper money that was used at the time of the founding of our country. Bills of credit, paper money. And no state shall make anything but gold and silver a tender in payment of debts. And that's all the Constitution said about money. What was the attitude of the founders regarding paper money? They had already experienced the Continental Congress issuing the Continental Currency. If you're as old as I am, or maybe you remember your parents saying something was not worth a Continental. That was a common phrase in our country. They weren't talking about the automobile. <laughs> A continental was the currency. They actually paid the troops that fought in the war for independence with worthless paper money. They didn't have any choice, I guess, but what they did was wrong. So look what some of the founders said. These are the men who went to the Constitutional Convention. Ellsworth from Connecticut, he didn't stay for the whole thing, but he was there for long enough. He said, shut and bar the door against paper money. James Wilson of Pennsylvania, remove the possibility of paper money. Pierce Butler of South Carolina, disarm the government of such power. And I love this last one from New Hampshire. John Langdon said, I would reject the whole Constitution if paper money is not barred. They knew what had happened with paper money, and they didn't want it to happen again. James Madison is the father of the Constitution. Look what he said. The extension of the prohibition to bills of credit must give pleasure to every citizen in proportion to his love of justice and his knowledge of the true springs of public prosperity. The power to make anything but gold and silver a tender in payment of debts is withdrawn from the states on the same principle with that of issuing paper currency. Let's take a look at currency. We'll, we'll draw a picture here of what has happened. I have pictured here a 1907 U.S. Treasury gold certificate. It actually says on it, this certifies that there have been deposited in the Treasury of the United States $10 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. The finest paper money the world has ever known. American currency that used to be known as good as gold was because of this. In 1933, President Roosevelt took us off the gold standard. He, he barred the American people from owning gold. He asked the American people to turn in their gold for paper certificates. 90% of the American people did. The promise was that as soon as we get out of the Depression, we'll give you back your gold. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Did it? So those gold certificates went out. We went then to silver certificates. 1935. It was 1933 when President Roosevelt did what I just said. Now these were also U.S. Treasury notes. And it says on the top, this certifies there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States of America one dollar in silver, payable to the bearer on demand. And that was good money. But that disappeared, courtesy of Lyndon Johnson, 1968. So let's go back now. The Federal Reserve was begun in 1913. And one year later, the Federal Reserve began to issue its own currency. Now this one's dated 1928, but a similar bill could have been put up here from 1914. And up here in the top it says, redeemable in gold on demand at the United States Treasury or in gold or lawful money at any Federal Reserve Bank. Now keep in mind that until 1933, gold certificates were still functioning, still being distributed. And these had to compete with the gold certificates from the Treasury. And so the Federal Reserve was very, very careful in saying that, yeah, their, their notes are also redeemable in gold. Until President Roosevelt took us off the gold standard. Then we went to the next kind of Federal Reserve note. And this one says up here, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, and is redeemable in lawful money at the United States Treasury or any Federal Reserve Bank. Then there's the famous story about the fellow who took a $20 bill to a bank. 
And he put it up on the counter and he said to the girl teller, he said, yeah, yes, miss, I, I'd like some lawful money, please. And she said, what do you want, two tens or four fives? And he said, no, no, if you give me those, they also say it's redeemable and lawful money. If it's redeemable and lawful money, it can't be lawful money. I'd like some lawful money. And he smiled. And she went and got the boss. <laughs> the boss came out and said, uh, sir, what can I do for you? Uh, I'd like some lawful money for my 20. Thank you. Uh, what is it that you consider lawful money? He said, gold. Sorry, can't give you gold. It's against the law. Thank you very much. Give me back my 20. You've proven my point. And out the door he went. So the Federal Reserve <clears throat> decided then they wouldn't say redeemable and lawful money anymore. And this is what you have in your pocket or purse today. And it says this, the, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, redeemable in nothing. Nada. Zilch. The amount of which, the value of which, the interest rates on which are set by a private agency called the Federal Reserve that is beholden to no one. Imagine. And in just in my lifetime, we've gone from the finest paper money the world has ever known to totally irredeemable fiat currency. Now, it's not valueless today. We will still accept it for your lunch. We will still accept it for, <clears throat> for the books and the DVDs that are for sale. But you know, and everyone who is sensible knows, that you can buy less today than you could yesterday, and it's only going to get worse. Every once in a while, you get some help from an unexpected source. In 1993, January, National Geographic magazine published an article called The Power of Money, written by one of its editors, Peter T. White. And in his article, Mr. White relates that he had just been told by a Fed official that the Fed had purchased 100 million in treasury bills from some securities dealers. He related his exchange with the Fed official as follows. Peter White said, where did the Fed get that hundred million dollars? We created it, a federal official tells me. He means that any time the central bank writes a check, so to speak, it creates money. It's money that didn't exist before, he says. Is there any limit on that? And the Fed official says, no limit, only the good judgment and conscience of the responsible Federal Reserve people. Sleep well, my friends, sleep well. Where did they get that vast authority? He said, it was delegated to them, Federal Reserve Act of 1913, based on the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Congress shall have power to coin money, regulate the value thereof, which is a bald-faced lie, and that Fed official may have even believed that. I don't know. I don't know who he was. But we just went over what that portion of the Constitution says, didn't we? And it does not say that there is no limit on the amount of paper money that can be created out of thin air by the Federal Reserve. 